Okay, guys, so I know you know this familiar, beautiful face over here with those long braids. Let's do a little pull to the front. I just, I love it. Miss Bianca Golden. I love it. Welcome. Thank you. All I hear is a black girl and her braids. That's all I hear. A black oh, girl and her braids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you are here in Harlem yes. at the Fashion and Beauty Networking Mixer. Yes. I want to know what brought you out this evening. Yes, well, you know, I am a big, big fan and advocate for all things black, all things fashion, all things beauty. And to just have all of those things, things element, all those elements, sorry, all those elements in one space, just this is where I'm supposed to be. Right. Yeah. You, you live it. Yes. So live you've been modeling it. for years Yes, Since I was 18. 18. Yes. Top model. Yes. I know that's an experience. So just give us a little, you know, we weren't there. I actually watched you. Did you? I did. Okay. I watched you then, never knew that I'd be sitting next to you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so just tell us, what was the one thing that you pulled away from your experience on America's Next Top Model? So America's Next Top Model, obviously a reality show, built and grounded in fashion and modeling so there were so many lessons that I walked away both for the business and for life and just learning a lot about myself and who I want to be as a figure now we call them influencers but just like as a model in the business mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that I take away Tyra said a lot, a lot was perfect is boring Perfect okay. is boring. It doesn't exist. We should let go of this idea that there is even in something for us to aspire to be that is universal mm -hmm. for everyone, right? Whatever it is that you are is beautiful. And so even when I'm flawed in the morning, I'm just like, this is my beauty. This is beautiful. And you talk, you talk a lot about um, learning things from your losses. Yes. Um, expand on that a little bit because I know a lot of times when you didn't get first place on this when you didn't get that home cooked meal that was like you get you didn't do the recipe the way you wanted to yeah. do when you weren't acknowledged in the manner that you thought yeah. you know we feel down yeah. during those moments so I want to know how do you really pull a win from any situation when you didn't get the accolades that you felt you should have got yeah I always say like I'm a master loser I've lost at everything <laughs> I don't have a particular talent in anything, but I work really, really hard. And if life has taught me anything, it's that like trust the journey. And that sounds so cliche, but it's so real that like, everything happens the way it's supposed to. And if you're really in tune with yourself and what is happening, you'll realize that it's all connected to get you where you're supposed to be. It's all purposeful. Right. So your journey has taken you from modeling to teaching. Yeah. Those are kind of like polar opposites in my mind and maybe I could be wrong <laughs> um, but from going to having the the stage the lights the glam to now you have kids looking for you to teach them and get them ready for the world yeah. what was that transition like huge transition and I look at it the way that you look at it the way the rest of the world looks at it like modeling teaching those two things don't go together but I find myself really tapping into model skills in the classroom so like I'm teaching 13, 14, 15 year olds and their attention span is like <laughs> zero to nine. And so you have to captivate them. And mm -hmm. so I'm constantly coming in and putting on a show. And that is not something that's innate. And so a lot of teachers don't just have that. That's something that's built. However, when you're coming in from the entertainment field, I know how to turn it on. And okay. I do every day. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are some days <laughs> where you just don't have it. And you literally have to put on a show. Okay. And so tapping into that has really helped make me a really good teacher. Not only that, it's I get to bring a lot of my experiences from the fashion world and I get to just teach real life. Like I'm telling my girls all the time, like I've been around some of the most beautiful mm -hmm. women in the world and they are empty inside. Like we need wow. so much more. Right. Mm -hmm. What else can you bring to the table? Or there are so many beautiful women out there. How do you stand out? Right. And so a lot of those things, talking to my guys and telling them there are other things you can do outside of just being a rapper or just being, you know, the simple, basic things that we see in our everyday lives. And so I just bring another reality. Mm -hmm. And I credit a lot of that to just being in the fashion world. Right. So do any of your students say, hey, you know what? I think I did see you on this or, or pull up a, a YouTube clip because, you know, they're good for the Internet. Do any of them do it? And how do you respond to them when they pull it out? Because you said in one of your posts that I'm no longer the 18 year old that was on 
top model, but I know kids like tight, tight, tight. Ah, uh, I don't know, can you Miss Golden? Ah, uh, look what you doing here then? Yeah, in class, I'm definitely Miss Golden. But all of my students have always known that I've been on America's Next Top Model. They Google me, they embarrass me, they quote my lines. Yeah. It's so cringy, and I have to talk about it. Like as a part of my story, mm -hmm. and I'm always empowering their stories. So I'd be such a hypocrite not to include that. I talk about it. I tell them that I cringe. Sometimes we watch it. If we have like soft times, we'll watch it. They'll ask me, what was Tyra like? They interview me. What was Tyra like? Right. What did you learn? Did you really not like this girl? And I tell them about it. And I think it just humanizes me as a teacher, as a person. Mm -hmm. It lets them know that everyone has space to grow. And so it's all a part of the story. Love it. So lastly, I want to know if it's a young woman who is in her early 20s to her 30s, she wants to model, um, but she is a teacher. She doesn't know how to balance the two or cross the two. What kind of advice would you give someone who's not ready to go full stream into modeling, but you know, they still want to, they still want to teach. They love it, but the two worlds don't really mix what would you kind of what would the advice be that you would give them this question comes up so much because people are always coming up to me uh my co-workers are like my my daughter is so cute i want her to be a model or like i have a friend can you give them any advice can you do you have any connections and i'm so far removed from the entertainment industry as far as like modeling and doing the traditional sense of it that I can't really direct anyone. What I can offer is this idea of like, use your platform. And so that cliche idea that we're all a brand, I really buy into it, I really subscribe to it. We have social media at our hands, why not use that? We've seen people go from overnight celebrity, like yes. become overnight celebrities. Yes. So really using that to like, the stage is your platform, like make it, the world is, your phone is your platform. Your stage is your phone. We, we got you get it. What I'm we saying? got it. Okay. <laughs> yes. So use your phone. Use your social media. Allow that to build your brand and put it out there into the world. I think this is the best time to do that. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Well, <laughs> that's Miss Bianca, honey, for you. Everybody, I want you to give us a fierce face. Give us a fierce oh. look into one of these cameras, <laughs> honey. Go. Give us your fierce. You still got it. Ooh, yes. <laughs> give it up for Miss <laughs> Bianca. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs>